Hey everyone, and thanks for joining today's tutorial. Today we are going to talk about loops and how you can actually use the native loop inside Flutterflow uh, without any code, without any custom code or code whatsoever. We are going to use loops uh, in order to, let's say, for example, update a list of documents. Uh, and uh, before we start, actually, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I have this uh, setup and I have actually changed my perks uh, in YouTube. And actually right now my, uh, my most expensive perk was Couture for Late and it's around 50 euro per month. And before that, I said that uh, you actually get uh, live streaming video with me or live session with me. Uh, but I actually changed that. And I actually offer right now my 10, more than 10 projects that I used for my tutorials. Uh, so you can see them over here. And some of them are uh, what's new, for example, that I used for all my videos for the updates and like a lot of other videos as well. And I have like this custom action in widget scroll master, which is actually this video it's coming uh, in this uh, days. I have the Spotify, I have the camera, all the super base, uh, all the super base actually code. Uh, you can have it over here. I have Google Drive as well. Uh, and I have download widget to PNG. Uh, so those are like 10, uh, projects that you have access to. I'll make you uh, a contributor, uh, sorry, a collaborator to the projects and you have the access to them and you can see how they build. You can duplicate them or do whatever you want to with them. Of course, the access will be read only, uh, but you can still duplicate them and then do whatever you want to do with that. Uh, great. So. Without further ado, uh, let's jump and start and first show you how this actually works. Okay, so before I show you how you can build this, uh, let me show you a working demo. Uh, so I have this, this is my project, What's New, and I have this loops. And if I click on loops, uh, you actually, it's loading, it's taking a little bit of time because there are a lot of, not a lot of, but there are around 10 documents, I think 13 documents, uh, you can count them. Uh, and those are the documents. And this is like the username, a random username. And then we have a random number that I'm generating, which is actually changing in my Firebase. I'm changing the documents to this random number. Every time this page is opened, I'm changing every single each of the documents to a random number. So if I go back uh, to my home page, and if I click again, it, the numbers should be different. So for example, the first number is 4455. And if I go back and click on it again, this number should be different. And it is, it's 4285. And here are all the numbers. It's the same numbers from here. I just put it uh, like uh, just only the numbers so you can see that. So that's actually, uh, like I said, the working demo. It's like I said, it's updating the database. It's updating the the uh, the Firebase, but of course you can use it for Superbase or any other backend that you have. Uh, you can use the same logic basically. So let me show you how you can do it. Okay, so this is my page. Uh, it's relevantly very simple page. The layout is super simple. Now I have the colon uh, and I have the colon. I don't have anything here in the uh, backend query, but I have the generate uh, dynamic children's. Uh, and this is actually coming from a page state. So let me actually show you the page states. Page states. So I have integer, which I called int. Uh, so this is an integer, which we are going to use inside the loop. And, it, and because all the lists starting are started from zero, that's why this needs to be a zero. It needs not to be a list, not to be a knowable, and the value needs to be zero. And then we have the identifiers. The identifier is actually, it's the 
thing that we're going to change uh, and we have it as identified. You don't need this actually. This is only for my demo purposes because I'm using it to display actually the identifiers over here that are being changed. So you actually, you don't need this uh, page state. It's only for me to display the numbers over here. And then we have the users because I'm, I'm actually changing the users and the collection is called users data. And so I'm, I'm actually uh, having a variable, which is a list of documents of my collection, which again, it's a user's data. And I call this variable users. Great. So the only th two things that you need is this one and your list of documents that you want to change. Or uh, rows, uh, if you're using Superbase, uh, it's rows. Great. Uh, and to display them, uh, like I said, you have the colon. Uh, and you don't even have to display them, actually, to be honest. Uh, it will be changed uh, even if you don't want to. If you don't want to display them, great. You don't need to. I'm just displaying them, but you don't need to. Uh, and then uh, to display them, you have this generate uh, dynamic children. And then I'm getting this value from the users, which, which uh, like you saw, just so it's a list of documents and it's coming from the page state. Great. And this is the individual user. And then I'm displaying here uh, the username uh, and also the identifier. And the identifier actually is the one thing that I'm going to change every time that the page is visited. Great. So on page load, and this is the scaffold, the scaffold widget. And when you click on it, you have this. Now actions, and if I open it, this is the onload actions. So the first action that I'm going to execute is I'm going to actually query my collection. This is my collection. I'm going to get a list of documents. Of course, you can filter if you want to, uh, but I'm not filtering anything. I have only like 13 documents, so I'm not filtering anything. I want to change all the documents. But if you want, you can filter them to wherever you want to. Uh, and then just change or update the ones that you want to, or just delete them. You can also delete them. I can show you how you can do that as well. Great. So uh, the second thing that I have is the identifiers. I'm actually updating the identifiers by the list of random integers. I'm generating a, round, a list of 13 items because I have 13 items. I know that I have 13 items. And that's why I, I have here 30 items, but it could be like something else, right? It, you, could, you could have like a list of uh, like uh, uh, names or list of whatever you want to update. But in my case, it's just a random numbers. List is 13 to 13 because this is my length of the documents that I have. And the numbers will be between 4,000 and 5,000. Great. And then we have the users uh, and I'm updating the users. So basically I'm getting, I'm actually not updating the users. I'm, I'm putting the users uh, inside, uh, the, uh, inside the page state. So you have the users, list document users, uh, data, and I'm just putting it from the action output. So from this action, which I'm getting the documents, is user documents, and I'm just putting them inside the page state. Great. And then the second thing that you have to do, so this is the first part that you have to do. And this is the second part, which is actually the looping itself. So you need to add uh, action loop. So just click on, this is a special action, and it's called add loop. It's not an action, it's add loop. And you have to click over here and you have you have this gray background or I don't know what's what is it like a different color of background, right? A, a more uh, wider one than dark one. And then great. And then uh, you have the loop condition. So when do you want this loop to break or to uh, get away? Uh, so in theory, if you actually want to break your computer, or if you want to break someone else's computer, uh, you can actually go over here and go to constants, which I don't see. Yeah, it's here, constants, and then just click on true. 
uh, and this will always be true and it will run forever. So the loop will run forever. Your computer will crash and uh, or someone else's computer will crash if you run it. Uh, so this is how you can uh, basically overload your computer. And in order to avoid this, uh, what we want to do is actually have a condition which will return false and sometimes and some sometimes. Uh, and our condition is very simple. Uh, we have the number of items. So we're getting it from the action output, which is the user documents. And we click on this number of items. And in my case, like I said, it will return 13 items. And then we have the, uh, the int. So it is greater than int. And this is coming from the page state. And if you remember, I told you that this should be zero because all the lists are starting from zero. So this should be zero. And basically the first time this run, it will check if 13 is greater than zero. If, uh, and indeed it is, so it will go inside. So when go inside, it will actually update the first document. And how it's updating the first document, I have this update document and I have the reference. So the reference, how do I get the reference? The reference, I get, again, get it from an action output and I have this index at, uh, sorry, item at index. And what is the index of the item? You have the specific index and the index is this int, uh, which is uh, coming from the page state. And this would be zero. And this would be the first item, zero. And then get uh, property, uh, get document property, and then reference. Uh, and then what I want to update it with? Well, I wanted to update it again. Uh, I want to update it the identifier and I want to get it, I want to update it from the variable. And again, I want to update it from the indexed list, specific index, and again, the same index, int. Because the idea is that I have one list over here and another list over here. So I have like two lists. And this list, first item from this list will update with the value of the first item of this list. This is the idea. And then the last thing that I'm going to do in the loop is actually increment this int value with one. So the first one, the first, the first time it will be zero and then it will be increased by one. And it will go to the loop again. It will go back here and it will check is 13 uh, greater than one. And the answer is again, it's yes. Again, it will go here, update this document, the second document, and then go over here and increase by one. And it will go to two. And then again, it will check is 13 greater than two. And again and again and so forth and so forth. And if you have 1,000 documents, it will do it 1,000 times. If you have two documents, it will do it two times and so on and so forth. Great. And then the last thing that you want to do, and this is only for displaying purposes. You don't need to do that. This is only if you want to display the results of your updating the documents uh, to uh, your page. So if you want to do that, again, you need to query the collection because uh, you are updated the collection. Of course, you don't need to in theory because you can just display the values, the updated values without querying it. But if you want to like 100% make sure that everything is working fine, uh, you can just query the collection again. And this time the value it's updated docs. Uh, and then I'll update the user's page state to the action output of updated docs. And that will actually and make sure to have rebuilt uh, current page. And here I forgot to mention, but here, I don't know if you notice it, but you don't need to rebuild it. So just click on no rebuild. And, and usually uh, like, and here again, no rebuild, no rebuild. And usually actually when you have like update page state, this is a bonus tip actually, when you have a page state or, um, or app state or component state uh, in a chain of actions, usually you want to only rebuild the current page once and it will be at the last action that you have when you're updating a page state or app state or component state. 
and that's way uh, that's 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 how this page will be only updated actually once and not updated three times because if I rebuild it three times, it will actually rebuild it here. It will rebuild the page here, and it will rebuild in my case particular. It will rebuild actually fourteen times more, thirteen times more, and the total will be forty times, and then the last time will be fifteen times. So I don't need that. I only need to rebuild it. Uh, with the, the last action of the, I hope uh, that was actually a helpful tip. And the last thing that I want to show you is I'm going to show you, because I promise you that I'm going to show you how you can actually also delete uh, the delete uh, those documents. So the idea is the same, click on delete document and I have to get the reference right now. So the reference again, I'm getting it from uh, the users docs again i'm getting it from the item at index is the specific index and then i'm getting it from the index is from the page state in te. Uh, and then i will come uh, sorry i will get the uh, get uh, document properties reference confirm and that's it actually that's even uh it's even easier because you're just deleting and you're not updating you're just deleting so it's basically the same thing just this part over here so that's how you delete uh, like a bunch of uh, actions without any code actually just clicking dropping and not you don't have dropping here but just click and yeah that's everything uh, you you that's everything that you need to know about loopings. And before we go, actually, I wanted to tell you that if you haven't already uh, subscribed to my Discord server, please do. Uh, so there are a lot of things that uh, you can learn from there. Uh, and uh, I'm constantly trying to be there active uh, and answer your questions. And again, if you have any questions regarding my tutorials, you can ask them in my uh, Discord server and I'll try to answer you. Uh, as fast as possible so yeah thank you again and before you go actually there is one more thing i need to tell you thanks for watching this video but please help me to reach 4000 subscribers uh, and when i reach 4000 subscribers i actually have a surprise for every single subscriber that i have i will shuffle them and i will do a live session and i'll announce the winner and what what will be the winner? The winner should be a subscribe to the channel. And the, uh, the prize is this one. It's a full flow swag, actually. I want to give to one of my subscribers. Like I said, it will be a live session when I reach 4,000 subscribers. And this Slack, it's actually have a t-shirt, the same that you see over here. It has stickers and it has a mug. So it's pretty good mug that you can drink your coffee or tea or whatever you like to drink from it. And like I said, I will give this to one of my subscribers. So please subscribe to the channel. And also I'll do a live session. So it should be in the live session when I reach 4,000 subscribers and I will just pick from wherever who is subscribed and it is in the live session and I put, pick a winner so he or she can immediately give me, DM me at the address and I can send this Slack box. So please subscribe to the channel to have a chance to win this amazing Slack box. I just want to say that the paid membership for YouTube is now open. So you can be a paid member to my YouTube channel, which means a lot. And thank you very much for all the people who are right now paid members to the channel.